this was an example actually of a project a few years ago in the landscape architecture department students exploring waste materials as a strategy for retaining earth okay and so one of the things you see in mexico um, and we're doing a fair amount of work in mexico and so we were using mexico as kind of a case study and certainly in northern mexico and tijuana and places like that you see the use of a lot of waste materials tires are really prevalent in the landscape there you see a lot of use of tires um, a lot of unsafe building takes place with tires because they actually aren't that great a device as a retaining wall. Right. And so this was an effort to look at what are the ways to utilize tires in combination with other materials, be it waste concrete or um, you can see they've got some that they put some bamboo in for a facade. I think they've got some, some heavier waste concrete materials behind that. That's sort of an effort to create some sort of retaining structure and experiment with how easy it was to build and so forth. So just a little experimentation. That's a, a straw bale building wall. We actually teach a workshop here um, occasionally in the summer months where we teach people how to put a straw bale building together, how to build one. And so they come out here and they build a sample wall and learn how to integrate a window into it and learn some of the basics of the technique. So that's sort of a temporary structure. Um, this illustrates um, actually a building technique that's developed by a group um, in the Mojave Desert by the name of Cal Earth. Um, and uh, this is a, 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 a super adobe, is I believe the, the technology they call this. And it's essentially a bag filled with soil from the site. Okay. And you can coil it around in kind of this beehive shape that can be made quite large. I've seen whole buildings built like this. This is just a small little test cell. Um, and you actually put down barbed wire in between each of the uh, layers of the bags to help hold them together in the event of an earthquake or something like that. Wow. And so this has been looked at um, as a technique for very affordable housing because it just uses material from the site. Kind of labor intensive to fill um, the bags with soil and so forth, but um, in a lot of contexts that's very cost effective. Back in 2006 we started working with an organization based in Orange County, California, called Corazon. And their mission is to serve the poor in Mexico. And among many of the programs it has, um, it has a program that focuses on home building, how to provide safe, affordable housing for residents in these uh, colonias within Tijuana. And um, they had, uh, we had talked with them about partnering with them on their home building projects. And in particular, they were interested in looking at ways that they could make their homes more environmentally sustainable, but also more comfortable in terms of providing some of the passive heating and cooling strategies that we've shown you in some of the other uh, research that we've been doing. So we got a grant from an organization called the National Collegiate Inventors and Innovators Alliance, which gave us a grant to create, construct a building prototype here at the center. Okay. The idea is that we could test out different materials here different design techniques, evaluate their performance, how durable they are, um, how well they perform in terms of heating and cooling and so forth, and come up with um, some, some design guidelines and some design recommendations for actually building a very affordable house that takes little or no energy to keep it comfortable in the Tijuana climate um, for you know, uh, the entire year. And so this represents sort of, uh, you know, an initial version of that. We've had a number of probably uh, close to 200 students over the last three years or so working on various aspects of this project. And it's got a lot of neat features that have been, that we're experimenting with in terms of uh, different types of materials and different uh, heating and cooling strategies. Okay. But really, the, the challenge we've given the students that, that Corazon has given us is that the building needs to be able to be built for about $3,200 in materials at the most. Wow. And so when you're looking at that very low cost, um, you're really interested in ways that you can utilize waste as a resource again. Are there materials in the Tijuana environment that are readily available that would cost very little or nothing that could be utilized as, as, as building material for the project? And so um, some of that, as we go inside, you'll see some examples. Um, okay. It is um, the equivalent the Corazon home now is 16 by 20, so that's, you know, not quite um, uh, 400 square feet. Um, and this is similar square footage to that. It has a loft up at the top, which is a common component of the current Corazon home, um, that often becomes either storage or that might be where uh, small children sleep okay. um, within the home. Um, what they built now is basically a 16 by 20 rectangle 
two by four construction with plywood siding and no insulation is kind of their base unit. There's no plumbing or electricity as part of that project. The materials project. are a lot of waste materials. The walls um, are a material we call papercrete. And this is an example of a papercrete block. It's extremely lightweight. You can see how strong I am. Um, and it, it is basically a concrete mixture um, that uses Portland cement and all the ingredients of concrete except for the gravel. The aggregate is not included. Ah. And instead of aggregate, what's used is waste paper. In our case, we're using um, newsprint um, that we got from local newspapers. And so as a result, it's extremely lightweight. Right. It is, um, has different strength properties than traditional concrete, but we actually don't care about its strength. What we're interested in is its insulative value and its ability to radiate heat. Right. And so the paper is advantageous to us in that regard. And the fact that it's so lightweight makes it very easy to work with. Um, and so this was actually a thesis student of one of our graduate projects, our graduate students a number of years ago, a thesis project that uh, he did, um, coming up with the technique for constructing these walls made out of papercrete. And so that's what you see here. Um, and it's performed pretty well. I actually don't think ultimately it's going to be a good material for Tijuana because I don't think the paper is going to be readily available in the communities that we work in right. on a consistent basis. So I don't think that probably will be used, but it's certainly a, a, a material that's gaining a lot of attention and there's a number of people doing various kinds of performance research with it now around the country. Well, at least you get to do the research and find out how it works. Yeah, that's how it works and it's, it was very easy to work with. He actually, we built the walls and then um, you actually cut it with a chainsaw and it cuts with a chainsaw very easily. Wow. And so we would actually cut the holes for the windows after the wall had been built. And so all of these small windows here on the north side of the house, um, which are primarily for daylighting, um, were all cut with a chainsaw and fashioned that way. And it works very quickly and works very easily. So wow. it's been a good material to work with in that regard. Easy construction, it seems. Yeah. The structure itself is basically a wood structure. Um, so again, these aren't. there's no load bearing on these concrete walls. It's actually there are two by four studs um, within the walls that are providing the, the support for the rooftop. However, a lot of the wood that we're utilizing in the case of the, the trusses for the rooftop here are reclaimed wood. So the students actually developed a method. One of the materials that's commonly available in Tijuana is wooden pallets that products are delivered on. Um, and there's a lot of building in the communities that goes on with those kind of wooden pallets. So the students actually developed a method of, of um, disassembling those pallets, gaining them together to increase their strength to create what is actually a very strong truss. This is actually holding up a uh, green roof, a vegetated roof on the top, so it has a fair amount of load, and we've tested it, and it holds up fine. This is a box on the, out, on the south side of the building that has a hole that leads to the interior of the building at the bottom and a hole at the top. Okay. And then you've got a, a chamber here that's encased in plastic. And what happens is that as this is open during the day, the interior space with its black background is going to heat up. Okay. And so the air inside that chamber is going to rise. And that hot air is going to go into the top of the building. And then when that hot air flows into that hole at the top, it's going to suck cold air from the bottom of the building in below. So this is what's called a heat exchange system. And the idea is that over the course of the day, the temperature on inside the building is going to achieve a similar temperature as outside the building. And so that'll warm up that house during the course of the day. Nighttime, you close that up, right. and uh, um, you know you you've passively heated the house again in a mild climate like a coastal Mexico, Baja California kind of climate. You've heated that up, and uh, very inexpensive. Takes no energy at all. So it's a, you know a way of taking advantage of concentrating that heat and getting that exchanging that into. Most of this time, we have that planted with a vegetable garden. You can see some chilies and some other things that have been up there over the day. You know, we've had strawberries up there. We've had other kinds of things. The idea of how to utilize that rooftop space for um, food production for the residents in that dense urban environment.